Hi guys, it's Adam and welcome to another video. So it's just a quick one today, but it is an eBay video. So big up the eBay videos because uh, I know there's so many people who follow me um, who will be happy to see an eBay video. Now I put a load of items, well, I say a load of items, nine items on last Saturday and they sold yesterday because it was because it was a week. Um, not all of them, of course, because some of them won't buy it now. So some of them are still on there. Um, I think I sold four out of the nine. Uh, that's three auctions and one buy it now has sold over the last week. Um, so yeah, that was good. Uh, I've got about 80 quids worth of sales, so I am more than happy with that. Especially at the moment, obviously with being at uni, you just it's just the way you need money. So I definitely need to put some more items on eBay as well, um, which I will do because I've, I've got four more items there. Problem is, as I talked about in a live stream, I bought X number of items with me to uni because obviously I couldn't bring loads or anything and the charity shops at the moment are shut because of lockdown so once I've got through this I've not got anything to put on which is a bit annoying um, but hopefully lockdown will end sort of mid-February here in Wales maybe maybe a bit later on February maybe I think it's been extended actually so it might be about 22nd of Feb or something but hopefully that'll end soon and go around the charity shops and pick up a few more items to put on um, but yeah, I was quite happy actually. I felt quite good doing eBay again. It felt right. It felt nice. It felt good to be doing it on a part-time basis as well. Um, and I'm not sort of overwhelmed by it. It's something that's just on the side and that is just one of the little things that I do. I, see, I like that because it's very, uh, it's very much who I am doing loads of little things rather than doing one big thing. I'm not, you see, I'm, I don't think I could be someone in society who just has one main job. I, I like having about six or seven different things that make up my, not career, but my job role or job title in a way, you know, rather than just one thing. It's, it's just relating to my personality because my personality is so expansive that, of course, the thing that I do in life, the, the job, so to speak, has to also be relating to that. Otherwise, I just get bored or just get down or just get feeling like uh, I've not got purpose, you know. Um, so anyway, with that being said, let's get on. Let's have a look at some of the sales that sold. Now, I've got my, my, my uh, eBay up on my computer over there. It is quite far away. My eyesight isn't that great. So if I start going like this, like an old man, What's that on there? You'll know why. Um, so first item that is sold is this 20 questions. Why the conversion to purple 20 questions, new and sealed. I've got six quid for this plus postage. Now on some of these items, I know the kind of the prices for, uh, of what I paid for them. But a lot of them, because I got them ages ago, I don't really remember the prices on. Um, so obviously I'll be able to tell you the price that I sold them for because it's right there in front of me, but not necessarily the price I bought them for. Uh, now, obviously all these items come from um, when I was deconstructing the business over the summer. Uh, I picked out certain items to bring with me that I thought were practically easy to put on, mostly new and sealed stuff. Uh, and so that's obviously where these items come from. They're just a, um, a part of my old stock, essentially. So yeah, six, uh, six quid on that plus post. Now, if I put it on by it now, uh, I probably could have got a little bit more of a 20 questions are harder to sell throughout the year um, compared with at Christmas. So at Christmas, you can get decent prices for them, maybe 20 quid, something like that as, as your top end. Um, I did look at the complete and solds and I swear at Christmas when I was going back through, uh, I saw ones that were going for like 15 to 20 quid. Um, but any other time during the year, they're very, very hard to shift. Even at like 12.99, they can take a little while. So I thought, you know, I just want to get things out on bid. So got them out. Um, as I say, six quid there plus post. Next, we've got these two times Lego education poly bags, new and sealed. Now, these will come from a Lego job lot. Don't owe me anything at this point. Um, I can safely say that a lot of the Lego job lots I cleared out and I made fantastic money on them. I won't go into detail because I got loads of Lego job lots and I could be, you know what, I'm like rambling. I could be here for 10 minutes talking about all these different stories of going around different people's houses and getting, getting these Lego job lots and paying decent money for them and 
and uh, being like, oh my God, this is so exciting and all the rest of it. It was really exciting, but I could just, you know, I'm not going to ramble. Um, but yeah, so that will have just been from one of them. £8.06 plus postage. I'm happy with that. Um, these things, I have tried them on Buy It Now before and they tend, those specific poly bags, because they're a bit more niche, they tend to sit on Buy It Now for quite a while. So again, auction with those lot, get them out. Um, and yeah, happy with that. Next, we've got these Lego 2x88,000 power functions, uh, brand new and sealed again. 51 quid on bids for these, 54 quid including post. Happy with that. That'll get me a nice couple of shops. Um, usually spend about 25 to 30 quid on my shopping per week. 30 quid is actually going high. It's, um, if I don't get snack, like if I don't buy loads of snacks or if I don't buy takeouts, because if I buy takeouts, then it's more obviously, but just a basic shop, I could probably survive on 25 quid um, a week, maybe even just a little bit less doing a basic shop. And that's at somewhere like Morrison's. If you go Aldi, you could probably survive on less than that. You could probably do 18 quid a week at Aldi um, as a student even. Now, okay, yeah, that is buying very selectively and really looking for deals and things and all the rest of it, but you could do it. You could do it. Um, so yeah, that's a, that's a good couple of shops there. So I'm happy with that. So that was that was those. And then finally, one one last item: Lego Speed Champions 303 uh, 42 Lamborghini. Uh, this came in one of the free gifts. So I got a lot of free gifts from uh, Lego Shop at Home when I spent over 35 pound for this one specifically. Or if you spent over 50 pound or 60 pound, you get you got another free gift. Um, now I got about four or five or something of these because I bought loads of, mul I bought multiple orders and every time you buy an order you get a free gift. So um, yeah, I, I had a few of these, I've actually still got another one to put on. These were going better earlier on. So when they first came out, they were going for about a tenner on eBay and I sold one, I think I sold one at a tenner when it first came out. Um, but then I decided just to keep them because I thought obviously they're good items for university when I was at, when I was coming to uni. I thought, oh, they're good items that I can just shove in a jiffy bag. Let's save them. Um, but unfortunately, the price has come down since then. So you can, you know, six quid. I mean, that one sold within a week for six quid. So I like that. I'm happy with that. If you were to put them on for eight quid or something, you'd, you'd probably be sitting for quite a while, uh, maybe three or four weeks or something like that, maybe even longer, to be honest. Um, but yeah, six quid out in a week. I'm happy with that. Um, so yeah, that is that one. And obviously I got that for, well, technically for free um, in uh, a Lego job lot. So from Lego shop at home. And of course, I've got a load of sealed Lego back at home um, that I'm going to sell at some point. I kind of wanted to just compile my Lego because I probably sh I probably will do a separate video on this of where I'm at with my investing and my reselling because something weird is happening. And I'm getting to a point now where my investments... I'm starting to see slowly how I can flip into, flip the passive income from certain investments into other investments that are more like tangible, let's say, or more, uh, or, or just different investments, to be honest, in general. Um, but what I want to do is get to a point where I've got like a main portfolio, which will most likely be my crypto portfolio, because that's my main thing. It's always been my main thing, really. Well, I've got my main portfolio and it's giving me a decent passive income per month. Like at the moment, one of my altcoins has gone up quite significantly and I'm getting quite a bit per month just on that one altcoin. I'm getting like 150 to $200. Well, this is if I keep track of it and if I am fairly active on the platform because this particular coin that I've invested in is, is tied to a social media platform. So the more you're active on the platform, just like the more you're active on YouTube, the more money you make. The more you're active on that platform, the more money you make. So if um, I've kind of worked out that with the price this coin has gone up to, if I'm fairly active on the platform, I can make like 150 to 200 dollars a month. And when I say fairly active, I mean like putting in half an hour a day of work or 15 minutes a day, really not a lot because my YouTube is directly linked to this platform. So anything I post on YouTube automatically get ad added to that platform, which means I don't really need to do that much work. There's just little bits and bobs on it I need to do just to keep it ticking over. So if that's the case, then I'm getting to the point now where if I can make, let's say, two to $300 a month on crypto, I can, I can, 
take that passive income and, and build up other investments with it like I wanted to do a few years ago. But unfortunately, the bear market hit in crypto and God, you, you are to make anything. Um, so I'm starting to see with these investments that this is now coming through and it's very, very interesting. I'm thinking, well, obviously at the moment, I can't really buy Lego because I'm not, I could buy it and send it back and get it sent home basically to my home address. But there's other things I want to do first. I want to build up my stock portfolio first with the crypto money, put that in there, then build up the others. I want to buy at some point some more banknotes. And when I'm like in my forties or fifties, I want to get into like wine investing. That'd be like, oh, that'd just, so that'd be so cool. Um, but that's ways down the road. But I, you see, I want like a main portfolio that then builds up other portfolios and then those other portfolios make passive income and then they, the passive income from those can kind of flip into themselves. And it's been a long time and a lot of mistakes, a lot of mistakes of trying to figure out how this can work and how I can do it um, in a good manner. The problem is because you, you so when you're young, you make a lot of mistakes in investing. It takes so many years to actually get to the point of being able to, oh, I understand how this might work long term now. And I'm starting to get to that point, I'm starting to realize, yes, actually, my original thoughts were correct. It's just my original decisions weren't necessarily correct. Um, but now I'm starting to see this and it's very, very exciting from a short term perspective and a long term perspective. And if I can start to hedge my my risk within crypto onto other investments then it's it's great it'll really it'll really um it'll really cement a good kind of um you know a strong investment portfolio for me which actually uh will really gain me some uh financial stability not now but you know 10 20 years time so that's that's kind of a plan oh i've got low battery one second um, so that's kind of a plan. Um, just have a main portfolio and then let's get all these branches off it. Let's get as many of these branches off it as possible. Um, but the thing is, I think that my eyes in a way have got a lot of spirit and a lot of fire and want to, you know, get involved with all these different things. But I think it would be good to restrain myself and think, right, first off, let's do two years of taking the crypto passive income that I get per month and flooding it into uh, a trading 212 account or a stock account, some, some description. And then I'll have a good like few grand in that, in that stock account, right? And I'll be getting X amount of dividend income because I generally invest in dividend stocks, but there's some stocks that I have that I don't, that are not a dividends and I don't have at all any, like, hardly anything in there. Um, but of course doing this, strategy it'll mean I will have stuff in there and also I will, I'll do like the dividend reinvesting thing you know reinvesting um, strategy and we invest the dibs in that for two years as well then I've got that built up then I think right okay I've got a nice little portfolio built up there um, now I've still got the crypto money I've got the dividends from there which are going to be higher in that trading 212 account now I'm not going to take the dividends out of there I'll just recycle that continue to recycle that for a few more years with this now, with this now crypto income, now I'm going to invest in something else. Now, do I think, well, do I do something that has a return on investment like a dividend or a passive income? Or do I do something that has a return on investment at point of sale, which is things like banknote investing, wine investing, uh, Lego investing. They're kind of like point of sale investments or point of disposal investments. Um, opposed to like, you know, dividend or passive income investments that give you something back as a, as a kind of income. Um, so I think, well, actually, let's do some point of dis disposal investments. Let's build them up. So anything, right, well, let's do two years of cycling that crypto income into Lego. And then I build up that and I maybe, maybe can put a good few grand into Lego and let that sit at the side for a few years, mature in, wait till the uh, sets retire. And then obviously I've got some money, I've got a lump sum of money there that I can sell at point of disposal. And then that lump sum of money, I can put, I, can, I can divide that, put half of it back into Lego, half of it into shares or something, put that there. Um, or what I can do is divide that, put half of it back into the Lego, 
because obviously I'll only need like half of it to build up the same amount of the Lego as I had before because the other half will be profit. So I'll put that back into it. And then the other half of profit, maybe I want to do banknote investing. Oh, I've got two grand here. I can buy some really good, nice banknotes that are very sought after. Put them in a folder, put them away, put them away for bloody 10 years, 15 years. And then, um, you know, the Lego, you flip that again, all the while you've got crypto money still coming in, you're putting that into your shares, you're recycling the share divs, then maybe your share portfolio has really got growing, so then your divs in that, you think, oh, actually, I'm going to use these for something else, so then you combine after like 10 years your crypto divs and your divs from your shares, put them into something else, oh, peer-to-peer lending seems okay, I'm going to go, mm, right, put them in there, build up your peer-to-peer lending for like four years, do 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 it, and then you've got a few grand in there, and it just like grows and grows and grows, and all the time, you're at, you're doing your active income as well, like your YouTube, your, uh, your well, I was going to say crypto, but actually we've already done crypto, but whatever it is I do for a career as well, like psychology or whatever, um, and x number of other little things bits and bobs here and there so um and you know book like for example poetry books and other books that i'm working on things like that and then it just flowers and flowers and flowers and you're like whoa this is mental so that's kind of how it works and i'm starting to see that now but the problem was i saw that i saw that very early on i saw that like 19 i knew how to kind of go about it but i didn't know how to i just made the wrong decisions so i knew theoretically how it would work but i just was making very very spirited and quick decisions rather than decisions based on the long term i was like yeah let's do this and let's do that and do the other um and my investment choices were some of them in lego it was, yeah there's quite a few good in lego but there was certainly some that weren't as good and there was some in crypto that definitely weren't good um and, you know, just here and there, the decisions, the decisions I was uh, not the best at. And I think that going through the mistakes and the real, like, crap times of investing and all the crap that you go through and stuff with it, you then start, it's in that that you, you get the information, you get that golden nugget and you think, yes, I know, I know where I need to go now. It's just trying to get there and stuff. Um, but yeah, I would say that's like my philosophy of, investing is i should do a video actually i'll probably do a video like my philosophy of investing and tie it into the philosophy videos but but that is a sense in a sense my philosophy of investing just like get something focus on things that earn you a like whether it be a passive or an active income from them focus on those things and then focus on the things that are putting that money that kind of little income that you get from them into other things that might be point of disposal kind of investments uh such as you know um certain well even like gold and silver things like that um or you know as i say lego or banknotes or wine or even i I did i've not looked into it fully but i was looking i was buying some cigars for my birthday and i thought i wonder if you can do cigar investing and i thought yeah there must be but obviously you'd have to get what I would want to do for that is I'd want to have like a room. And so this is another thing for in my 40s or my 50s. I want to like have a room that is set at the temperature. So it's like not just a humidor or like a, a box or anything, but like a humidor room, like an actual room. And then just line it with like hundreds on hundreds of cigars with the money that I've got from my other investments and just plow that into the cigars. And then I can use, I can have the cigars for myself. Not, well, not all of them because I don't really want to smoke loads. It's not necessarily a good thing. But, uh, if any, if I have a vice, if one of my vices would be smoking, I don't really, drinking's okay, but I've never really got on with it that well. So if I had a vice, it would be smoking. Um, and so I could use, you know, every now and then special occasion, have a cigar. Um, I could do that. And then obviously I could sell them off as well when we start to mature in investments. Especially, I think, if you go for, like, the real high-end ones that are, like, limited edition packs and stuff, and you get, like, a, a pack of, um, I was going to say a pack of 200, but we don't do a pack of 200. I don't know why I was saying that. No, we do, like, boxes of 50, I think, like, 25 or 50 and stuff. So you could get boxes of them and just put them away, and you buy the boxes that are, like, starting off at, like, 300 quid, and they're limited edition ones, and you just put them away for, like, five years. Well, I don't know. I don't actually know how long cigars would last. So that would be a thing to, to counter. But I think if you had them in a, a room at the correct temperature, you should be all right for quite a while. 
Um, but then again, I don't know. It's something I'd have to look into when I start that investment journey. But I just love it. I just love trying to invest in whatever I can. It's just such exciting. The, the most exciting thing is for me is what investment is out there that is totally bizarre that people don't even know is an investment. That's what I want to find. I want, I, that's my mission in life to find an investment that is so bizarre that no one invests in, but that then ultimately will have a market, like that real, 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 like diamond gem of a gap in the market. Um, but I just, I don't know. Like you think, I've got a load of sparkling water over there. I'm like, sparkling water is an investment? That's all I do. I just look at, when I'm in that investing mindset, I just look at everything. I'm like, could that be an investment? Apple AirPods, could that be an investment? No, okay, maybe not. Not in my lifetime. If I kept like one of them brand new and sealed for like 400 years, yeah, but you know, there's no point. I could pass it down through the family. I could stockpile Apple AirPods, brand new and sealed, and then put them in a vault. And then when I die, my son or daughter, if I've got one, gets the code in the will, right? Last will and testament. And we go, go down there, don't open them, right? But you can go in the vault. Then what I want you to do is Pass the code down to your son or daughter. Right, there you go. 4896. Okay, right. And then the son and the daughter, they get it in their last will and testament. And it passes it down until they're worth a certain price point. And I have within the vault um, a certain price point that I want them sold at. Like, it's so, it's so funny, this. But then, like, maybe they're worth, like, seven, 800 each or something, like, by that, that time. And then I've got, like, I don't know, 50 or 100 of them, and then they end up selling them. You see, that's my brain. That's how weird, how crazy my brain is. It's like it's like transcendent with its dimensions of time and reality with regards to investing. I'm such a crazy person. Um, but anyway, I'll leave it there, guys, because I've rambled at the end of this. Um, but yeah, with that being said, I'll leave it there. Uh, thank you very much for watching, guys, and I will see you in the next one. So see you very soon.